Hey everybody, um, <laughs> y'all, I'm trying to learn how to work this new, uh, equipment I have. Um, I'm in my bedroom right now. I hope I don't mess anything up. I've got earphones on, so I hope y'all hear me better. Um, we're gonna go over, this is the Ultimate Fan Channel. It won't have any pictures at it, but I'm gonna stop and give my response to Mike Stone. I have a lot of words for him. Um, on, uh, why? Are, I'm glad you're writing the book, but why are you uh, trying to say Priscilla and uh, Lisa what happened? That all of a sudden they went downhill after you. you know that they went downhill after Elvis, and Elvis went down after uh, they left. Also, um, you broke up a marriage, and Priscilla broke up a marriage. And... Um, Where's your daughter, Mike? So, anyways, let's go ahead and get into this. Um, y'all know me. I'm going to give my opinion. Oh, my gosh, these earphones. Y'all, I have got to get. When I finally get a building one day and get a setup after doing all this from phones and tablets for two years, it'll be so much better. Okay. Let me go ahead and uh, press play. Her marriage to Elvis. Yes, but in, in, the, in the initial stages... Um, uh, neither of us had any idea where it was going to lead to. I, I didn't have, I couldn't foresee what was going to happen. So I think it was just things that over time, that again, cyclically, it just developed into something more and more. And it's just like the learning process. So when she came down and started taking lessons, and if she was twice a week, and it move up to five times a week, and you know, the more time you're doing something like that, and the more time you're spending with somebody that you're working with, then there's going to be a natural evolution and transformation on for both people. So I don't think it was something that uh, uh, she didn't talk about it, really about her situation with Elvis, and I didn't either with my wife, but it was just something that slowly just gradually evolved and became something more than uh than we thought it would be initially okay so after all the meetings she she, she took lessons with you and things like that yes yes and then you spent the the day at catalina island yes uh, -huh. uh that was a, a major turning point in your relationship if you just like to maybe just outline the, 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 the that day for us well, it was again. It was some time later. It wasn't uh, soon after she started taking classes. This may have been five or six months later. Oh, right, right. That that particular uh, situation came about. Yeah. I, I don't obviously. I don't want to dig too deeply because um, I remember you telling me in our previous interviews that when you gave an interview, and I think it's the only interview you ever gave about this. Um, that uh, yes. they, they wanted intimate details of uh, you and Priscilla's relationship, which you obviously and quite admirably uh, refused to give. Well, it, that that wasn't the interview thing. That that turned out. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm trying to fix my earphones. Hold on. These things, I do not know how <laughs> they they were in my ears, and they keep trying to move and fall out. I've got to get me a better. Okay, and I'm just getting frustrated. I'm sorry. Okay, let's see if we can make this work. I don't know who designed these things. Okay. Okay, maybe that's going to make it work. Okay, let's go ahead and see if this will work for a little bit. I try to be comfortable. Whenever I do this, my kids are all home right now. Uh, well, my teenagers. So, <laughs> anyways, but let's go ahead and do this and get into it. Okay, come on. Terrible. But it was um, about when I went to visit the people at Random House in New York about making the book. And that was the one chapter that they had wanted uh, specifically and was a deal breaker. And it became a deal breaker because I wouldn't write anything about our social relationship. But th that evening that you came back from Catalina, that was when you became intimate. And as I say, your relationship actually changed that day, yes? That's correct. Uh, 
I've also you've also written in the book that you had concerns that you may have been manipulated uh, at this time. Can, can you just tell us a little bit about your feelings about being manipulated? Yes, of, of course. And it was, I I think it was born uh, out of my insecurity. You were manipulated, Mike. <laughs> you were manipulated. Uh, you were used and uh, you destroyed a marriage. Uh, you weren't the only one, but Priscilla destroyed a marriage and no Elvis wasn't perfect, but you should have respected him and his family. And you had a wife and kids and you were manipulated. Okay, so let's just go ahead and press play. Pretty at the time and born out of uh, the incredulous so, situation I found so myself in being that she was Priscilla Presley. So I think the combination of both things, it was like, uh, I couldn't really understand her motive for, for, for being with me or even wanting to be with me. So I was just uh, very cynical about, about her motivation. And I couldn't think of anything valid. I mean, I was not rich, attractive, or... Her motivation was you were played. <laughs> Her motivation was you were played. You were played for the fool. She used you for what she wanted you to be. And she wanted somebody that uh, could get to Elvis. I believe that. I believe that she had a lot of bitterness and jealousy. Uh, I don't want to, you know, I'm not going to sit there and talk about Priscilla uh, as a young girl like some of these channels do and try to dissect a uh, child bride which is vulgar uh, that she seduced uh, Elvis at uh, 14 when we all know that Elvis wasn't perfect but the way she handled things it was disgusting it wasn't very ladylike and this is a, not the type of person that Elvis wanted to marry um, she knew who Elvis was and uh, I have a lot of y'all going to follow life, so let's go on with the interview. I have to stop it for all because if not, I'll get copy striped. Uh, this is Ultimate Fan. He is wonderful. He really doesn't, you know, he stays kind of in the middle, which is good for channels like me because I want to go one way or another or give way too much opinion. So, I admire him. I like to watch him because he just pretty much listens and don't really give a, a response either way. So, um, he pretty much is just, you know, the Elvis fan, which I'm an Elvis fan, but I'm also love Priscilla when she was younger, and, um, I'm gonna call out the bullcrap that I see. Famous. Okay. So, none of those three qualities that most women are looking for, man, I felt I didn't possess, especially someone like her that was with the, probably the most handsome man in the world. Mm -hmm. Famous and rich. So I didn't have any of those qualities, so my natural instinct, I was uh, quite insecure about the reasons why she was uh, really pursuing to have a relationship, just for her to drive 60 miles or so from Beverly Hills down to Orange County, California. That was already, to me, I, I questioned that. I questioned her reasoning and thinking for wanting to make such a drive, not once or twice a week, like most people take karate lessons. But if motives, and why, why was she? I don't believe that. I believe you knew just why she was driving down there. You knew just what her motives was. And you also, in a way, wanted Priscilla because uh, even though you said, why would she want you, you knew what she wanted. And um, I'm not being vulgar. <laughs> I'm not being vulgar, but, um, uh, just read Elvis and me, and you pretty much see what she was. She her, she was tired of uh of not getting uh physical attention. Now that's what she said, not me. But let's just go ahead and go on. Doing that, you know, and I think even women do that also. And you ask the question, why me? And if in my situation like that, it was really like really, really why me? It's like a, it's not something that anybody can have any logic and reason in figuring out. Oh yeah, I get why I get why she selected him. No way. Yeah. So yeah, I I thought I was being. And then, as things progressed, I lost that that thought. 
as we were more intimately involved in the relationship and had it extended for three years or so, then I didn't feel that anymore. I felt very secure in our relationship and in who I was and who she was because she was really developing very rapidly. She was coming out of her shell. She started to really have some confidence and know who she was. So I, I think it was something very positive for both of us. But then toward the end of our relationship, the that idea about being manipulated came back into my thinking because in retrospect in in the last six or eight months of our relationship i think it became obvious to me that maybe i was somebody that she felt that could help her Thanks in the desperate situation that she was in, and I think trying to find someone, you know, she could have easily gone to and some young actors. Um, what desperate situation was she in? That's what I'm asking you, Mike. Uh, she lived in a mansion. Uh, she got anything she wanted. She was pampered by Elvis from the age of uh, 15 to 16 and had pampered poodles and and um clothes and all that yeah did did was there a lot of wrong done yeah i'm sure there was but there was a lot that was good was done and um uh how was you going to help protect her from and and what i want to know is if she wants to get out of it and y'all wait and he's going to use some other words in a little bit what i want to know my question for you mike stone is uh you said that she didn't want to be known as uh a presley anymore or something in here uh well then my question for priscilla is respect respectfully and i love you priscilla i'm just i'm not on either side i love El elvis too but my question is and my main person i love the most is i grew up on lisa and i'm for lisa lisa's the justice for i want i want to spread her love everywhere so my main question for you, uh, Priscilla, is, is why are you still going by Presley? Uh, I mean, you had several other men, and you've already had another son. So why are you still going by Presley if you want to escape this so bad? I just don't understand it. Okay, let's go ahead. People like that. So th there was a reason she selected me, and I think the reason was that Elvis spoke so highly of me because Elvis was taking karate from friends of mine uh, that I knew very well. So I, I think it was the martial arts aspect of who I was, my name and reputation in the martial arts, my accomplishments and achievements in my art and sport was comparable to what he was doing as a singer in my simple, humble world. So I think she felt that I was someone capable or strong enough to withstand any type of uh, criticism or anything like that. But again, maybe toward the end of our relationship, I could see that the, the ends of the string that she was tying was coming together and she was forming a knot. That she no, she was trying to get Elvis back because Elvis had, had with Anne Margaret and all these other women and all this stuff, but he loved his wife. I do believe that. I believe Elvis loved his wife. I believe that he would be faithful after uh, Lisa was born, but now Priscilla, baby, I love you, but you already knew you had been there for so long in that that you already knew what you was marrying before you married him. So, I mean, I don't understand that. Like, I, I've had to learn that the hard way, honey. You can't make a man change. Uh, just because you think that you're going to go and uh, you're going to all of a sudden be his wife, the problems that was there before is going to be there afterwards. And by having a baby and marrying him on either party, uh, I think Elvis and Priscilla had been together for so long that both of them had kind of like, it's kind of like that childhood, uh, you know, that one person you dated your whole life, maybe a few people make it, but you kind of get the burnt out relationship from but Priscilla, you went around about this in the wrong way. And my question to Mike Stone is, uh, why did, are you asking Priscilla and Lisa what happened 
when you're the main thing that happened. <laughs> you're the main thing that happened. You willingly, instead of cutting it off and being a real man and saying, no, Priscilla, I will not be a part of this. I respect your husband too much. Uh, I don't care, you know, um, uh, if he's Elvis. Uh, I, I have a wife. I have a kid. Um, where, why are you not taking responsibility, uh, Mike Stone? And since you feel so impassioned to stand up for Lisa, uh, Lisa, I, I want to know how come uh, you didn't stand up for her when she was a baby and tell her uh, her mother, his her her mother, Elvis's wife, to go to her husband back to her husband that you wouldn't want to be a part of breaking up a home. And uh, also, your wife was pregnant. And you had a family, and your daughter, you left your daughter. So, how come you're on here giving information about someone else's daughter, which is the king of rock and roll, Elvis Presley? Um, why are you giving information about his daughter's life and saying what happened when you was the main one that played a role in it? And I want to know, um, my other question to you is, uh, you and Priscilla's affair is what happened. That's what happened. Uh, his daughter... Uh, even though Elvis was not perfect, he loved his daughter. He, he wanted his, his wife there. He wanted his family there. He was all about about having a home and a family. And that's all he had when he went home. He was a, a performer. He was he, he had to perform, 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 make money, make money, make money. And uh, all of a sudden, while he was making money, you was uh, karate chopping with his wife behind his back. It was, it was a conclusion. There was a solution to her overall dilemma and desperation that she suffered at the beginning of our relationship. That's where we try to get away, but who, who can help, who, who can best serve me for what I want to do in my life at this time? And I think I served that, that purpose. So I think when it came, Oh, yeah, you serve the purpose, all right. <laughs> you were serving it up and down, left and right. And while Elvis was sweating and performing and trying to trying to provide for his family, he might have had a little uh, flings or something like that. But, honey, you was you was a serving left and right, and his money was what was paying for his wife's lessons and her way to go and her way of living. Toward the end, and she felt very free. Once she opened up Biz and Bull, um, she was now uh, in the Hollywood scene. She was in Beverly Hills. People got it, got to know who she was, what she was doing, buying her clothes, and she was very good at that. People already knew who she was, Mike. She was Elvis Presley's wife. She didn't need you to go to the top. You're not the one. She didn't use you to get away from Elvis so she could reach to the top. She used you because you got played, and she wanted to make Elvis mad. She wanted to divorce him, and she didn't think it would really go through. It really had the ripple effect that it had, and she did not care about the need of her daughter uh, as a mother to say, you know what, I know that Elvis has made mistakes. I know that, you know, but there's a better way about doing this. Um, I'm going to present myself like a woman that Elvis wanted. And um, if he can't meet my needs, if he's having these episodes or whatever, then um, we're going to go about this the right way without me going uh, down the road to uh, the next Joe down the road or someone that, that Elvis actually, he, she knew Elvis liked karate. That's the reason why she chose you. She knew Elvis liked karate, and she was trying to play Elvis and get to Elvis, and it had a ripple effect. It affected so many lives from y'all's two decisions that y'all made. Um, Elvis was working for his family. He was performing. Um, he was not perfect. We all know that. But when, when it comes down to it, I believe that he loved his wife and his daughter. And um, he blindsided him, uh, knowing that uh, you would be the type of person, uh, not really you, but his, his wife, that his... His wife that he knew for so long had molded and shaped and thought that, that she was going to be this person that was going to be, if he wanted an actress, he would have married an actress. He would have married Anne Margaret. He wanted someone that was going to be at home, love him and love his daughter and be there for him. And be there also uh, through the hard times and the good times. But uh, I guess we all got played with that. So let's first play. Very good taste and style in clothing. So I, th I think, again, it was just a natural cycle and progression of things. So 
uh, but that feeling crept in at the end of the relationship because I could now see and you know put the dots together from the very beginning mm -hmm. that there was a function and purpose in me being with her that may not have been <laughs> of course you know good looks fame and money <laughs> so I, I, I think I think we can all agree with that and I I mean I'm not so naive and stupid I know my limitations so yeah so I think it I think in a way Y'all, besides this dude doing karate, can you imagine leaving Elvis Presley for this? <laughs> I'm sorry! I'm sorry! He seems so dull. I almost want to go to sleep listening to him. Could you imagine leaving Elvis Presley for this right here besides the karate? Okay? At the end, I felt manipulated because I could see now where it was going. The first three or four years, it was very <sighs> nice. You know, she, you know, all of her friends were my friends. I never met any of her friends the entire four, four and a half years that were her friends except Olivia Biz and maybe Nora and Joni Esposito. Other than that, I have met no one. Because hey she baby, I'm on live right now doing a she video. To be, and of course she had Lisa, positive. so she... I'm on live right now. I'm talking to my niece doing a video. I was just like, no, no, I'm walking through here to the, through the, uh, through the kitchen, uh, to get me a snack. Uh, y'all, this man's put me to sleep. I can't, I cannot believe this dude is trying to write a book about Lisa Marie Presley after he took Elvis's wife that chased him. I mean, it, it, she was going to leave Elvis Presley for this. This guy, guy, it's not even the looks to me. He's so dull. He's just, his voice, he left his, he left his wife that was pregnant to take Elvis's wife. And Elvis's wife, Priscilla, was going to see him with Elvis's money, Elvis's daughter. And she knew what she was getting into when she married Elvis. He, she had been with him since she was 16 years old. If he wanted an actress, if he wanted someone to dance and do jazzy dance and karate chop lessons, uh, he would have married that. He had the opportunity. He could have had any woman he ever had. Uh, she went and chose this man because Elvis wanted, uh, Elvis loved karate. Uh, I don't think Priscilla was doing too much karate. Uh, I know what Priscilla was doing. But the fact of it is, if Elvis wanted someone like that, he could have them a million a dozen. Um, he he had a baby with her. He had uh, been with her since she was 16 years old. He thought he was marrying someone, a good old, he was going to turn her into one of us, a good old a southern girl, you know, because we're, oh, I'm sorry, Victoria. Hey, baby. My, my, my niece is cooking, uh, I mean, fixing cupcakes. Anyways, but, um, but he thought he was going to turn her into, I'm going to sit right here for a minute. He thought he was going to turn her into the good old, the I mean, uh, the good old s Southern, just like we're raised. I'm from Louisiana. I'm two hours away from where Elvis was born, been to Graceland, been to, my daughter's the ultimate Elvis fan. Uh, been, she, we've been to all the uh, personages. Well, I haven't, but in my niece behind me. Uh, but don't worry, baby, in, in case she's not showing you on camera. <laughs> and let, let, I would ask you that first. But my niece behind me, my daughter, uh, we've been to all the, uh, I have it, I have it. I've been to Elvis. Uh, I went to Graceland. I've been to um, the the house he grew up in. Um, we, uh, we was raised literally on Elvis in Louisiana. Uh, my daughter went to the high school where the auditorium where Elvis performed. Uh, I'm, I'm two hours away from Shreveport where Elvis performed. Uh, he thought he was getting someone like his mama, a good old Southern girl, and he thought if he wanted an actress, he could have married an actress. But he didn't want that. And Priscilla knew, you know, and I love Priscilla. I love her. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to be on here talking about how she seduced Elvis. That's sick. 
That's disgusting. And whoever does that is sick and they're disgusting and they need help. And um, especially if they're a man and they're sitting there saying that I think Priscilla is gorgeous. I think she's beautiful. I think that um, Elvis had outbursts. I think that he had a temper. I think, but my God, who wouldn't? The man worked five days a week, five nights a week. He, he, he had literally was providing every need of the aspect of her life. So you have to imagine, she knew what she was getting into. If Elvis wanted an actress or a dancer or a uh, anybody in the uh, entertainment industry, he would have got with Ann Margaret, which he he had the hots for, baby, and she had the hots for him. And you know what? He chose Priscilla because you know why? He had promised her and he had molded her into what he thought. He would be there, be there for him through the good times, the bad times. They had a daughter, and no matter what, that's what he thought. He didn't know that when he gave her money, a ride, classy clothes, the head of the baby, put that ring on that finger, baby. A year later, she's gonna be getting karate instructions down the down the road from from uh from the karate instructor. But I don't think those were the kind of instructions she was getting, if you know what I mean. Now let's go ahead and press play. Protect her and. And it, she wasn't just going out and about and, you know, oh, uh, sorry, keeping Lisa yeah. safe was, uh, <laughs> was a more priority for both of us and especially mm -hmm. for Elvis. So I made sure that I would be a protector for him and nothing but happened to, Pris to Lisa and Priscilla while they were with me. No, you, you, I gotta you, let my daughter know something because she loves Priscilla too. Uh, well, you don't, well, you do love her though. You we love Priscilla, but what we're saying, I, I'm I'm doing a reaction video. Okay, yes, yeah, she loves Elvis more, but I'm doing a reaction video to uh, the 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 guy that she loved Elvis for has now come out with the book, Shayla. What? <laughs> yes, <laughs> Mike Stone. He said it says Priscilla and Lisa. What happened? And he left his wife, his pregnant wife. For Priscilla, she was going and seeing him while Elvis was performing, getting a look at Mama karate instructions, and he left his pregnant wife, the whole family, for Priscilla. And four years later, uh, and she, Priscilla left him. Okay, uh, the thing of it was, she only got with the karate instructor because what does Elvis love? Karate, the only other thing than music. And my, my thing of it is, is that she knew it was Elvis Presley. I'm sorry, but when you go into something like that, and you have a baby, and you hit, yes, it's going to be hard. I could only imagine. I could only imagine what we don't know what she went through, okay? But, on that hand, you married Elvis Presley, okay? And you have to realize that He's not your normal Joe. If you want your normal Joe, you should have married him and not married Elvis. And Elvis could have married Aunt Margaret, baby. But you got Elvis, had had the baby, which there's a whole other conspiracy on that. I'm working on it, breaking it all down. Because I, I think I know why the wedding was so rushed. Okay? But you did what you did. This would be like somebody marrying Michael Jackson like Lisa. When she married a Michael Jackson, Okay? Lisa, honey, she was strong enough to own it and know what she was getting into and to respectfully own it, baby, and she did own it, okay? And they own one another. <laughs> Anyways, but my point of it is, is that Elvis thought, you know, regardless, I, she I, she knows, Scylla, Scylla, Scylla knows me. You know, Scylla, I, wait, that didn't sound right when I said Scylla, because he would call her Scylla. Scylla knows me. He thought, you know, he found someone like his mama. Uh, he could kind of teach her to dress, teach her how, you know, how to do her hair, and just everything like that. And she would be there regardless, waiting for him. Because he, I really believe he loved his wife and his daughter. And I believe that's what killed him in the end. I, yes, did he have a pill? Who wouldn't have a pill addiction? If you have to work uh, five days a week on stage and sweat your guts out at Vegas, uh, wouldn't you need some uppers or downers? Who wouldn't have an addiction? You know, oh, I'm going to go in here. All of my teenagers are coming out. I have one, two, three. Okay, everybody tell YouTube you love them. I'm not on video. I know. Nobody's on video. Uh, yes, it's me. They're looking at me. Okay, hey, everybody say, uh, whose team are you on? Elvis or Priscilla's or 
or do you feel like well there's a, they don't have to be a team are you just um wanting to know more about Lisa? I choose Elvis because he's, he's my baby. And he's yes, hot. yes. Okay, would you left Elvis the way Priscilla left Elvis? See, baby, I'm not done. I wouldn't have got with, I may have would have fooled around, but I wouldn't have got married. Yeah, that's my thing. That's my thing, too. Because I would have, honey, I might have had it been going and getting, you know, if he was, you know, and all that, but honey, I would have never left him for, for, for that. Uh-uh, no. No, 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 no uh-uh. So. Uh uh, and what you know what you was getting into if you was marrying Elvis? I, I know. Okay, okay. Now I'm gonna go in here. Okay, I love y'all. Y'all let me know when those cupcakes are ready. <laughs> in the book, did you think that uh, obviously it was a very stressful process, uh, her leaving uh, her marriage and you leaving your marriage? But you you say that she deserves credit for what she did. Well, yeah. When I say that, I'm I'm looking at you know. Listen, I mean, we have to. Well, we don't have to do anything. But I would like the readers to have really two things, an open heart and an open mind. I mean, I, I want them to look at themselves first in their present romantic relationship or anything that they've had close to that, that for whatever reason didn't work out. Listen, and there are a million reasons why things don't work out. So I, I want them to stop and just, you know, get away from fantasy land of, of seeing who they are in fantasy land because the reality was for everyone I mean you look at their lives really who would want to be that honestly who, who would want to consciously choose a life like that where you think you have total freedom but you don't it is not a freedom type of a thing I mean you, you don't want you can't eat you can go to a movie I mean you know, to want that as a life is not a freeing experience. I mean, you, you, you do say in the book that she no longer enjoyed being Mrs. Elvis Presley. Uh, you know, the whole, the whole... Yeah, it was not fun. You know, her initial, maybe when she was 14, mm. of course, 14, Elvis. Yeah. What? Wait! <laughs> oh no! Is this, he said that she's, you say in the book that that Priscilla no longer enjoyed being Mrs. Elvis Presley, but I have a question. I don't, I have a question. Oh, y'all, I'm just bringing the cards so y'all can call it and order Mama pizza. I want, I want sweep the kitchen. Are you in love? Uh, yes, yeah, but nobody can see y'all or hear y'all. No, that's cool. I okay, know. okay, but I have a question. I have guys, a question. Let me tell y'all, guys. <laughs> if she they can hear you because of my earphones, I think they can hear you, though. Okay. I really do. Well... She knew what she was getting into. Because, baby, everybody wanted Elvis at the time. He was the hot topic. Yes. And I, that was me. I just would have done something. I know. I know. I know. I, I know. Uh, this right here, um, he's saying that she no longer wanted to be, oh my God, I dropped my earphone. Can you hand that text, picture, baby? That she no longer wanted to be Miss Priscilla Presley? But my question is. Why'd you keep the last name, baby? Wait, I know. Oh my god! Oh my god! This is just so hilarious. It, it, oh, he said that she, that that she, that Graceland was like a dungeon. Well, uh... Why'd you open it up for everybody to see and walk around? It was such a dungeon. <laughs> my god, Trailer, Trailer, you need to get on here and start doing mother daughter reaction with me. Y'all comment down here. below if y'all can hear my daughter in the background. She's sixteen, so she's she's age enough to be able to respond. Almost seventeen. Uh. I would love for her to get on here and respond because she's been an Elvis fan since she was. I respond. I read yes. And everything. I mean, you scared uh, me when you first became like obsessed. I know. <laughs> listen. I you all the way. But listen, now I'm the Michael Jackson fan, so like me and Shayla could go all day, baby. Uh, we could go. Right. We could. We could do a life on Michael, Lisa together, and then we could do one on Elvis. Okay. Oh, let me go. Let me go ahead and press play because I'm supposed to be responding to this, but. He said that she was she no longer wants to be known as Miss Elvis Presley. Okay, let me press play. Elvis, my God, you know, for a, a, baby. a teenager like that, he's the whole world. So you can imagine going to paradise or going to his castle, going to Graceland, and you think at 14, being very naive, but maybe very ambitious, 
you know, this may be my ticket into who I want to become someday. Not realizing that she could never be allowed to be that person. Elvis would not allow she is like a possession. regular woman, so she's the so she, she, whatever idea she may have had at 14, by the time she was 18, the reality set in that she was in Graceland, and it may have been a castle, but it was a dungeon, and she was <laughs> My stuck God. here and couldn't find the way out because Yo. when she, she had with all of it. Are you? He said, did she realize maybe at 14 it was a fantasy? But whenever she got there and she was 18 or 17, she realized it may have been a castle, but then it was a dungeon. <laughs> he acts like that this woman was, I mean, I, I know that Elvis was like us. You know, he was a night owl and he slept, he had to, he was, he performed, he performed in Las Vegas and he liked Southern cooking. He had the, you know. And the girl, I'm just laughing. I don't mean to laugh. I'm sorry. I, I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay. Mama. Huh? Are y'all sure? Wait, what about dominoes? Just call Johnny's to see if, if, if they can deliver one. Friends, uh, with the people around him, uh, with the movie industry, uh, with other women. Oh yeah, I'm sorry, there won't be no more interruptions. I'm I'm gonna post this live and we can comment down below. I'm sorry for, for getting sidetracked, okay. I was trying to talk to my daughter about something. Just, uh, I think, I think the, uh, they're ordering pizza, they're teenagers. Uh, I think maybe Domino's might stay open late. I thought that uh, that Johnny stayed open until eleven thirty. I know what we could get. Uh, Quick Trip makes any kind of pizza you want. Yeah, I don't know. Gross. Uh, okay. I mean, she realized I cannot get out of this. I have to wake up to the reality that even if I wanted to become a singer, an actress, whatever, I will never become it. I will, I will never get out of here. Yeah. And I think when that set in, I don't know how early it was for her. Wait, I didn't know that uh, Priscilla wanted to be an actress or a singer. I thought she was really quiet and shy, and that's what she, she didn't like to be, you know, in the limelight and all that. That's what, what Elvis thought, and I guess everybody else, and then... <laughs> Okay. But when it did say, imagine how powerful it was for her, both in disappointment and in the idea of really being free. Both limitations can be extremely powerful and motivating and inspiring for you to get yourself out of this at any cost. So I just want people, I just want the readers to just take a moment and if they can reflect, if they've ever had a romantic relationship in their life, then to figure out if it didn't work, why not? Mm. Yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, we have to be. I I, under, I understand how we are as as human beings. I I, I understand our frailties. Believe me, I do. Uh, so obviously, it progressed to divorce. And uh, I'll read some more extracts, actually, that you've said. Elvis was blindsided and lost when she told him. Um, do you think that Elvis knew that there was maybe something going on with somebody? And, and did, did Elvis know about you? Did he, did he know it was you at the time? Well, this is, this is a conflicting thing, because when I say conflicting, I mean I've, I've obviously taken the time to, to watch and listen to many of Priscilla's interviews over the years and it's it's fraught with contradictions about she never talks about me in any way she never mentions me even when she does she misspells my name or they do well she didn't mention you because you want nothing to her mic song but she uh she she didn't mention you because she's in her head that she's still that 18 year old girl elvis is still in the army 
and uh, that's just the way she is. That's all you hear. So um, she's not going to mention you because she don't. She knows in deep in her heart that um, that she did wrong, and that uh, it destroyed a lot of lives, and including your own family. And you did wrong. Or she mispronounces my name in some of the interviews. So I don't know why she divorced herself of me that way completely. And it, and again, when she left, this is where, again, the manipulation oh. thing comes in, is that uh, I thought it was a fantastic four years for me. And I thought it was for her and Lisa. And I know for them being in their situations at that okay. time Hold in on, their life... Me. I was never a negative influence on them. I'm sorry, y'all. It's Saturday night. My teenagers are over here. I mean, teenagers, my teenagers, teenagers are always home. They're always here, and they had company, and they was asking me about ordering a pizza. Okay, let's press play. Y'all are family. I love y'all. Y'all know I'm just who I am. I'm not going to get up here and pretend to be sophisticated and fancy. Let's just... Press play. Throughout all of the time and to now, and it will continue to be. There is nothing I can say negative about either of them. I was blessed to have them. So, uh, you know, for for her, maybe, I don't know, and she makes it sound like I was just a fling or just something that happened temporarily. Well, I think our relationship lasts longer than most marriages in Hollywood. Yeah, well, I mean, it, it was at least four years, wasn't it? So that's more than a fling. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I mean, and I, I, unless I was in Disneyland somewhere, I mean, yes, it was, it was more than a fling. It was something quite special. So, but I think when that, when that door closed and she moved on into what she really wanted to do was to act and be in Hollywood and, and, and be wealthy, and, and which is good. I think that's... I don't begrudge her any of that. In fact, she will get all that she deserves. And you can take it any which way you want, karmically or realistically. Now, once, once it broke uh, that, uh, that they, they were divorcing and you were involved, as it was, the paparazzi started bothering you and you, you took measures and you moved to a house on Summit Drive for your own sort of security and also for Lisa's security, didn't you? Yes. Yeah, when nobody really knew we were seeing each other for really a year. Mm -hmm. The time that we lived in Naples and the time she came down to the school, I'm really surprised that Nora and Joni never said anything to their husbands. Or if they, she, they did, the husbands they told this to didn't have the courage to tell Elvis at that time. So they just shut up. So there was at least a year that we were running uh, you know what, Mike, uh, Elvis's, uh, friends, or whoever, Joni, or whoever you're talking about, didn't say nothing to Elvis because they knew it would tear him up, and I was probably hoping that it was a fling and that, that she wasn't going to leave Elvis, because he, they knew that it was going to destroy him, and that he was already fighting depression, everything else. Um, okay, let's go ahead. I'm going to press play, and um, I'm going to go off camera just for a minute, and I'll be right back on here in a minute, okay? okay. Took measures, and you moved to a house on Summit Drive for your own sort of security and also for Lisa's security, didn't you? Yes. Yeah, when nobody really knew we were seeing each other for really a year. Mm -hmm. The time that we lived in Naples and the time she came down to the school, I'm really surprised that Nora and Joni never said anything to their husbands, or if they, she, they did, the husbands they told this to didn't have the courage to tell Elvis at that time, so they just shut up. So there was at least a year that we were running around and nobody knew anything about it. It was only until uh, Elvis found out, and it wasn't, Priscilla tells me she never told Elvis the night that she told him she was leaving and wanted a divorce. She didn't want a separation. She was set on a divorce. That's the only way that she would leave him, that it would be a complete severance of the relationship. So it was not a separation, not a trial period, not a timeout. It was going to be a divorce. So it had to be final in her mind to get away. 
So, but during that whole time, up until we went to, well, whenever it was released, we were already in Marina del Rey. And by then we had paparazzis following us around. And especially when we moved to Summit Drive, because of Biz and Bo being in Beverly Hills, very, you know, within a mile or so of the house, then of course everybody had access to her and the word was out and who it was and everything. So uh, there was no need for hiding. And it was a sanctuary for us in a sense because it was a perfect location to also keep Lisa uh, safe and protected. Tell me a little bit about your relationship, how you got on with uh, Lisa Marie. I mean, you know, uh, you've been accused of... <laughs> no, well, actually, we'll, we'll, we'll touch on that later, your critics. So, yeah, let, let, me, let me just ask you uh, about your relationship with Lisa. I loved her. She was fantastic. You got on well with her, and she, she got on well with you. Oh, yes. I mean, can't, I mean, you look at the pictures. Yeah. I mean, if... if you know, you have to be deaf, dumb, and blind, obviously the blind part, if you cannot see the relationship we had. And then I, I write several things about about holding hands when we went walking and stuff and how she would always run up behind me and grab my hand to make sure she was secure, even though she was holding Priscilla's hand initially when I would come back from either locking the car or letting them go ahead. Uh, whenever I was around, she would always make sure she would hold my hand. And the reason the relationship was so nice, I think, uh, is because I, I regret that I had a daughter her age. Uh, Lisa was only four months older than my daughter, Shelly. So at the time that I left my daughter, uh, Lisa was the same age. So being with Lisa was an absolute joy for me. I mean, I had an opportunity to make up to her what I did not have a chance to do for my own daughter. What name did uh, Lisa call you? Mickey. Yeah, that's right. I have it written down here as well. Lisa always called me Mickey. <laughs> nice yeah. So, yeah, I mean, she was obviously very fond of you, and I can tell that you were obviously very, very fond of her. Well, you said you loved her, so, yeah, I mean, that's yeah. that's, <laughs> that's, en that's that's enough for me, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Priscilla uh, and uh, uh, and her view on Lisa Marie marrying Michael Jackson. What what, uh, what did she? Uh, did, did, did you did, did you hear anything about that? Because that was actually after your relationship ended. But did you hear, ever hear anything about that? The interesting things I've heard are just reading between the lines of interviews she has had about that. So you can you can see that everybody around did not really that knew she did not appreciate that particular move. So she, she didn't like it and she didn't think it was necessary, but uh, that, that could have been one of many reasons that at the very end of her relationship with Lisa, that it was, it was that far apart, that there were just too many things throughout their life that, um, uh, and it was, and, and I'm happy to say that it happened after they left me. So, you know, when, when Lisa left, she was about six or seven. And then obviously Elvis died when she was nine or so. And that was devastating. But I think from that point on, from Elvis's death for Lisa, I think it was virtually impossible. And then, however, Lisa chose to behave uh, with the Scientology thing and putting her at boarding school. So these things happened after after me, and I'm, I'm so happy that it did, and I wasn't involved. Oh, y'all, I had to get a little flashlight because my husband's over there sleeping. Look, look what I got. <laughs> you want Paul out laughing? Look, I'm going to get me some other little stuff too for when I get my office. If you can see it, hmm? I was trying to show it to y'all. It says, well, I don't know. I don't know what's wrong with this camera. But it says I can't even see it. Okay, maybe you can see it there. So it says I can't even and it's a bell. So when y'all hear me wearing this bell, it says hey, I'm going to roll my eyes. That's going to be like, oh my God, okay? <laughs> oh, oh my God, my, my earphones just fell out. Okay, let's press play. <laughs> Y'all, this has been a night. I'm telling y'all, I must love my YouTubers. Okay. Mr. B no, Gibson, you better be on here listening to this when I upload it. Okay. 
<laughs> because the times that I was with them was really the best times of their life together and with me. Both you and I know, uh, we've actually discussed this as well, that you have been criticised for over 50 years uh, about this. You have been sort of made out to be uh, the villain of all this. So, I mean, you've even been crit uh, accused of trying to stop Lisa Marie seeing Elvis. You've been accused of being uh, making money off of Elvis. You, but uh, through all this, 50 years or more, you've not participated in one book. So I think it's only fair that you should be allowed now to address some of those accusations that are always being made against you. Yeah, well, yeah, those those two things in particular, uh, you know, upset me because it's, first of all, it's not true and I'm not that type of person. So I, it doesn't matter what people think about me, they're going to have their own opinion. And most of the people that, you know, at that time, they're probably no longer with us. So, you know, I don't know if the new people are still feel that way, but I have a sense that they don't. I hope they mature and grow grow up from 50 years ago and they've had things happen in their life where they can appreciate the position I was in. But as far as making money off of Elvis's name, I've never made a penny off of his name. I've, I've been given more credit for being Elvis's instructor, his teacher, his very close friend. None of that is true. I was never... I never made a penny off his name probably because you got paid, paid off for so long and the money stopped coming. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You know they paid him off, or Priscilla made him sign a uh, a uh, a some kind of thing where he wouldn't talk. But it had to be so many years. That that's the reason why. Our, but uh, let's go ahead and finish listening to him, y'all. I'm starving. I'm trying not to. I don't like people that eat when we're watching stuff. So I might just go off of here, and we'll listen to the rest of it. Um, and y'all comment down below. Uh, at the bottom line of it is uh, that uh, you played a part in it. Uh, I will read his book because I just want to, to see what he's going to have in there. And then we're going to do Lisa, uh, Lisa's uh, memoir and everything like that. And But at the bottom line, uh, Mike, you were uh, fooled and you were used. And... Um, Y'all both broke up homes, and uh, Lisa Marie, uh, Lisa and Priscilla, what happened? Well, uh, you happened, and Priscilla happened, because her dad died, and, um, and after Elvis, Priscilla could never, she went from man to man to man, and acting and all this, and she thought this was all she wanted, and she's still going by Priscilla Presley. And um, at the end of the day, y'all could have saved your family and her family, and um, so much uh, people from being hurt from this it's still affecting lives the decisions that y'all made because the way it was handled uh, you don't handle anything like that if you're a real man if you're a real man you go to the other man and before it even starts and you tell him uh, well you might not could do that with Elvis because Elvis might have just shot you you walked up to him stealing him or something like that but you go to uh, if y'all are what's going to do this, you do it the right way. Um, you divorce, you, you, then you move in together, then you, uh, you know, all the, the other stuff. Um, but the way it was done was very ugly, it was very wrong, and it had a ripple effect. And, um, uh, that's just the way life is, and it seems to me like you're just trying to candy coat it here. I'm taking my stuff off camera. We'll listen to the rest. Everything in this video is alleged. Alleged. I gotta start doing that at the beginning of all my videos. And um, this dude's making me fall asleep. He's just like, oh. Seems like he don't take any responsibility. He don't want to take any responsibility. And uh, he's trying to candy coat it. And it seems like he's mad because Priscilla don't think about him. Doesn't mention him. Maybe have you thought that? Deep down in Priscilla's heart, she knows she made a wrong decision, and she doesn't want to mention you because it's a part of her life she don't want to face that she did. <laughs> that she knew that she made, she destroyed her daughter, her, 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 her husband, and 
you know, I'm not in, in on, on both parts. I'm trying to re remain as an Elvis fan. I want to remain respectful to all parties. If I see something wrong, I'll call it out. You know, I know Elvis did wrong. I know he wasn't the perfect person. I know that Priscilla probably wanted just him and her after they got married and that everyone else needed to go and let them have their time together. But Elvis wanted those people around him. And so, you know, there's a lot of things that could have been done differently. And so we're going to just go ahead and press play. I'm taking myself off camera. I'm hungry. I love you all. Keisha Koo, I'm going to go ahead and take myself off camera and then I'll upload this in a little bit. I love you. Trying to, trying to see how I can go. <laughs> okay. His teacher ever. I never taught him a lesson. Mm -hmm. I met him maybe only on three occasions. At the time that Phil Spector, Phil Spector took me to see his uh, show in Las Vegas, uh, I met Priscilla at that time very briefly. Uh, I met him in the lobby at the Aladdin Hotel on a week. Chuck Norris and his wife and my wife we were in Las Vegas, and uh, I walked up to uh, to Elvis and, uh, and they were sitting in the lounge. And from that encounter, he invited us to watch his show. And the third time was at the show. And after the show, uh, we went back up to see him. So those are the only three occasions in my entire life that I. I've met and spent any time, and again, even the time that I spent, it wasn't hours and hours, it was a matter of minutes. Uh, the longest was backstage at the Hilton after the show. Uh, I've made no money from him. I've been offered a lot of money uh, a long time ago uh, to write a book, and it wasn't about Elvis, it was about Priscilla and my relationship, and I chose not to do that. Uh, so I, I haven't benefited in any way. There's nothing you can ever find in the past 50 years, and there's been over a thousand books written about Elvis by everyone except me. So, and I cannot write about him because I didn't know him. I don't believe that. I'm still here, y'all. I'm just not on camera. I don't believe that because you know why? I believe that he was, he was signed a, a non disclosure agreement. And baby, you was paid off for a certain amount of time. I just refuse to believe that you refused out of all these years to write anything or do anything. But all of a sudden, since Lisa's passed away and everything's now uh, went to Riley, uh, now you can uh, you can come up here and say that I never made any money, I never blah, 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 never wrote. But no, baby, you was paid off. It was a non disclosure agreement. Uh, between you and Priscilla and uh, the state that you wouldn't talk, but now you can. So let's go ahead and press play. So what could I possibly say about him? And as, as far as Lisa, yeah, as far as Lisa Marie keeping him away, uh, I just told you my feelings about Lisa and about uh, the, the fact about my daughter. So. I mean, there's there's no way on earth. First of all, I mean, let's be let's have some common sense. I mean, who am I to say to Elvis, you can't see your daughter? Who am I to say to Lisa, you can't see your dad? Who am I to say to Priscilla, Lisa's mom, you can't allow Lisa to go see his father? Never, <laughs> never have I done that. Never. I would never do that. I wouldn't want anybody preventing me, and nobody could prevent me from seeing my daughter. I don't care how rich, handsome, and famous they are. Well, I think uh, both you and I will agree with this next comment. Truth doesn't sell magazines and books, unfortunately. Of course not. It's gossip and bullshit. There's a, a, a part in the book that says farewell to Lisa, and it's uh, yes. sort of your, your... Sorry about that language, y'all. I didn't know he was going to say that, so... Uh, let me go ahead and press play. Feelings about Lisa. There is actually a lovely photograph on the cover of the book where it's taken with you and Lisa at an amusement park and you're both looking at one another. I wanted to yes. just, I wanted to mention that because it's a lovely, lovely photograph. And I think it's obvious anybody looking at the photograph knows how the two of you feel about each other. Yes, and that, that's the whole idea. The idea was, uh, what is it, a Chinese proverb that a picture is worth a... 
I think it's weird to me. I mean, but that's your own opinion. I mean, if you want to... I, I think that it's weird. I think it's uh, hurt Elvis, and I think it's just weird. I mean, why are you going to put that picture on the head of your book? That's very odd to me. You know, uh, are you... I would like to ask Mike Stone some questions. Are you in your own daughter's life? Uh, why don't you put a picture of your daughter up there and, and Lisa, Lisa by each other, and uh, one of you and your daughter, one of you and her, and say... Uh, and then, uh, say, uh, and then one of you and Priscilla and Lisa, I'll, you know, do a collage and say, uh, what really happened, uh, to Lisa and, Pr what happened, Lisa and Priscilla, like that. And then, then, uh, and explain, you know, the whole thing, how you broke up your home, how you, I think it's weird your poor daughter had to look at you sitting there mother and so, I mean, uh, father and somebody else's, uh, daughter, uh, Elvis Presley's daughter, trying to be the dad in her life when you left your wife pregnant and left your family, and it disgusts me. It's sick. I would not even do that out of respect for my own daughter. Where's your respect for your daughter at, Mike? I was in words? Yes. That's right. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, if you could speak to Priscilla... And Lisa Marie, one more time. What do you think you'd say to them? What happened? What 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 happened to both of you? I don't I don't know. You know, it's just uh, there was so much time has passed. Uh, so many things happened in everyone's life since then. So I can only remember uh, the times that we shared, and they were I was blessed. So I'm wondering what happened to those two people. Mm. I, I can see. I can see. It's quite. It's it's quite difficult to sum up. Is what what you would say to them, isn't it? Yeah, because it's 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 mind because there's so many things, but it's mind-boggling to me because I know what's happened to my life. And I know how I've moved on, and I'm, I've accomplished so much more since we left. But I, I can't fathom what Priscilla was thinking to manage Lisa's life. I, I, I don't want to think about that. You, you, you obviously, I, I know the answer to this question before I ask it, but I'm going to ask it anyway. There's no regrets about what happened between yourself and Priscilla, Lisa, and obviously ultimately Elvis. No. I mean, that's, I mean, it's, you know, it, it, when you make decisions, three things are going to happen. You're going to have results, outcomes, and consequences. Now, this is a part that discusses me. Is that <laughs> he still don't take any uh, responsibility? He don't say, uh, "I want to apologize for uh, I would apologize to Elvis." That's my regret. I wish I could have had apologized to him before he passed away uh, for for breaking up his family. For uh, for I wish I could apologize to, to my family. I want you know to uh, it wasn't right. And he have no regrets, you know. You live with it, it, this man is just oh my god. I'm, and the consequences is the part that most human beings do not want to accept responsibility for. But when you make a choice, you're making a commitment, and the commitment is I am responsible for the choices I make. I am responsible for my wife and my kids. When you make a commitment to your wife, or when a husband makes a commitment to his 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 wife, and a wife makes a commitment to her husband, they are responsible for that marriage and responsible for doing everything you can to work. No, you don't stay in an abusive relationship. I've been divorced when I was younger, 27 years old. But you do everything you can to make it work. And I could say that coming from a situation where I had two babies, was raised in church, married a person I thought that I would be married to. 
uh, and it turned out to be a nightmare from hell. <laughs> I mean, a nightmare. But you don't, you know, you make responsible decisions. You do everything you can to make your marriage work. And um, that's right, Mike, you know. Huh? 100% responsible. So that's it. It's, it's very easy. There's no backstabbing. There's no pointing at other people. There's no blaming. There's no... Yeah, there's no backstabbing. Uh, didn't you backstab Ellis? And didn't you backstab your wife? Uh, because you were sleeping with another man's wife. And uh, your wife thought that you was working. And you was sleeping with uh, another man's wife. Uh, isn't that backstabbing? And uh, didn't Priscilla sleep with you? And uh, was uh, saying that she was doing karate lessons? So uh, there's no backstabbing, but... Uh, you're contradicting yourself here, Mike. So let's keep going. Accusing, there's none of that. But yet, in truth, there is 98% of that in the world today for anyone that makes a choice that doesn't work out. So, uh, you know, I accepted responsibility for my choices and decisions with my family, with my ex-wife, with my children. I accepted that. I made the choice. I have to accept, that's all there is to it. There's no, you can't do anything about it. But yeah, you accepted it, but did they accept it? Did you apologize for it? Did you truly say that you were sorry? Did you apologize to Lisa as an adult, write her a letter, reach out to her, uh, try to call her, try to get in contact with her and say, I'm sorry for, for having an affair with your mother when you was little. I'm sorry for uh, not being man enough to go to your father and apologize. I'm sorry your father died. I'm sorry you've had to go through so many things in your life. And I, I want to tell you, you know, everything is not my fault that's happened. But I was a big part of the major points, playing points in your life. And I want to tell you, I want to apologize to you. You know, I mean, hello, dude. Hello, is anybody up there home? Flowers, candy, and lollipops. Now, when I think about, you know, Lisa was just a child. So, I mean, we can exempt her from everything. She became truly a victim. And yet, I say that, but I don't believe there are victims in life. I really don't. I'm of the belief... Well, I believe there's victims. I believe that people can be victims uh, when uh, their wife's pregnant and uh, they are sitting there getting paid lessons from someone that's sweating their, you know, what off on stage and working their ASS off. And I think that, and God forgive me for saying that, but I'm getting really upset this guy, so I might need to get back out of here and get off of here. But I think that... Um, uh, uh, whatever I said, this dude's just, I mean, he's totally contra contradicting himself. So, um, uh, I just, I do not, I do not like the way he is approaching this. I do not like how he sounds cocky. I do not like how he sounds like after him, Lisa and, and Priscilla went downhill. No, dude, after her father passed away. And after Priscilla knew there would never be another Elvis, she kept trying to find someone to to fulfill what she thought she was missing. So go ahead and just keep talking and blah, 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 blah. And on. There's no such thing as victimhood. So you make choices, there's consequences, you accept them, you deal and you move forward. That's That's my philosophy of life. So if there's anything that happens along the line of consequences that you're not accepting, then all of these other options are going to take place because you're going to negatively influence everybody else that has to do with your choices. And since you're not accepting responsibility, all hell can break loose in your life with all of your relationships. No Okay, uh, so did you, like I said, did you, did you accept the responsibility? Did you go to Lisa? Uh, forget Priscilla, did you go to her as a young adult when she could understand it? 
and say, I'm sorry, I want to tell you that, you know, the way I went about everything with your mother was wrong. Um, if, if you have any hurt or if anything, you know, and that happened affected you as a, as a child, uh, I want to apologize for my part I played in it. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, that's what I want to know. Matter with who, for what reason? So this is very important, and I don't have to say any more than, listen, everybody can look from the time Lisa was nine years old, from the time that they left, they can look at their lives and look at their lives. It's been very public. There's nothing hidden. And you can see what happened with the choices they made. It was the death of her father. Oh, my God, I'm so upset at this man. This dude right here is trying to say it's because of him. He saved him. He blah, 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 blah. What happened is her dad passed away. Priscilla realized Elvis, she killed Elvis through um, the hurt, the pain, and not really killing him, but he already had the addiction, and she thought probably this was going to be a divorce, but later on, they would get back together, later, later on, longer in life or something, and they would always be in each other's lives as friends, or blah, 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 and, uh, it kept going and going and going, and she's still living in fantasy land, and you're still, you're in fantasy land, Mike, because you're still thinking that, that you saved them, and that after you, if they, she divorced you, that, that it was a down spiral. Uh, no, the death of their father, her father, Lisa's father, and the percussion of all that is what happened, okay? There was a down spiral. Um, y'all, I'm going to go ahead and end the, this right now. I love you all. Keisha Koo, babies, and I'm ringing my bell. I can't even. You can't see it, but listen. Listen. All right, hang on, let me get it. No. Baby, I can't even. I can't even, can't even, even take it. <laughs> I love y'all. Please subscribe, share, and I hope y'all like this. I worked hard on it. I know it was a lot going on. It's, it's Saturday night, so that says a lot. So, I love you. God bless you. Keisha Koo, I'm signing out, baby, and I can't even, uh-uh, baby, can't even do it, can't handle it, can't take it anymore. I've got to go, got to go. <laughs> love you. God bless y'all. Bless you. God bless you all. And Mike song. I can't even. Can't even. Can't even take it no more. Can't even. Can't even. Take all your stuff. You saying? And Priscilla. If she didn't want to be a Presley. She needed to. Y'all, I'm picking, okay? <laughs> I was doing a little thing. This is my thing. If, if, this is, this is Elvis. If Priscilla didn't want to be a Presley, she shouldn't have took my name. And Mike Stone, you can shove it and go, cause you won't ever be the man I was. You are nothing but a loser. You are a fool to me. And <laughs> take your book. And you shove it up your butt. Cause I'm saying you are nothing but a big old bleed. Okay, y'all pick it. Okay. I love y'all.